Everyone talks about using two-factor authentication, strong passwords, and VPNs. That's the basics of privacy, but honestly, if you're watching this, you probably already know about these. But privacy and security goes way deeper. In this video, I'm going to show you some unconventional privacy strategies and tips that you probably have never heard of. These are tips that will ultimately protect you from surveillance, scams, identity theft, and other data breaches in ways you've never considered. Trust me, some of these will change how you view or use your devices. So let's get straight into it. Tip number one, Use a standard Windows account instead of the default admin account as your daily driver. Stop using your admin account for daily use. Instead, create a standard user account and do all your browsing, emails, and work from there. This tip is one that is more for Windows users, I guess. Using a standard account is one of the easiest ways to protect your computer from getting completely wrecked if something goes wrong. Because if your computer ever gets compromised, say through a malicious link or a dodgy installer or even a zero-day exploit, the attacker or malware only get access to what your current user account can access. And if you're running as admin, you just handed them the keys to everything, system files, registry, drivers, and more. But if you're on a standard account, they are trapped. They can't install rootkits, change security policies, or silently set up persistence. It's a small shift that makes a huge difference. Just keep your admin account for when you really need it, like installing trusted software or changing settings. And then you do everything else from a standard account. Tip number two, use a unique phone number alias for two-factor authentication. Most people reuse their main phone numbers for two-factor authentication, but that's dangerous. Your personal number is probably already in dozens of databases. It's tied to your name, your email, even your address. So when it's used for 2FA, it becomes a single point of failure. Especially if someone targets you with a SIM swap attack. You know, that's when an attacker tricks your mobile carrier into transferring your number to their SIM. They instantly start receiving your text, including login codes. So here's what you must do. Step one. Call your carrier and set a port out pin. This is different from your account pin. It's specifically used to block out unauthorized SIM transfers. Most carriers won't tell you about it unless you ask, but it's one of the strongest defenses you can enable. And then for step number two, don't use your main number for 2FA. Instead, create a voice over IP alias number using services like gmp.chat, mysudo, or even twilo. Now, you must only use this number for multi-factor authentication, nothing else. No messaging, no calls, no public exposure. If that alias ever gets hit with spam or login attempts, you know your 2FA layer is being targeted. And you can rotate it without disrupting your life. Doing this closes one of the most overlooked holes in your personal digital security. Tip number three, compartmentalize your email. One for banking, aliases for everything else. Phishing, identity leaks, and mass spam are real threats as long as you use the internet. Compartmentalizing your email will keep you safe. Create a unique email used only for banking, nothing else. No online shopping, no newsletters, no social accounts, just your bank. This way, if or when a phishing email shows up pretending to be from your bank, but it lands in your personal inbox, you know straight away it's fake because your real bank only has your hidden private email. Services like Proton Mail are perfect for this. They respect your privacy, don't scan your inbox, and let you create separate addresses without linking everything back to one identity. But that's just one part. For every other site, use Bona email aliases. 
tools like Simple Login, Anon Adi, and Firefox Relay let you create a new alias for every account. So for instance, Netflix might get Netflix at youralias.com. Amazon might get Amazon at youralias.com, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, if one of those services gets breached or starts spamming, you shut down that alias instantly and the breach doesn't connect to your real inbox or identity. On a regular email service like Gmail or even Outlook, you can create simple aliases using the plus symbol. So for example, if your email address is jondo at gmail.com, you can sign up to Twitter with jondo plus Twitter at gmail.com. The emails will still come to your inbox, but you can filter by alias and instantly spot who is sharing or leaking your data. Tip number four, stop using your physical credit card. Use tokenized or virtual payment instead. Swiping or typing in your actual credit card number is one of the riskiest things you can do, especially because of the increasing number of card schemas. Every information needed to use your funds is already on your card. From the number to the CVV, expiry dates and names, you name it. You want to make sure these are never presented in public. Now, I know you may think of cash as an option. Yes, it's private, but if you get mugged or lose it, it's gone for good. So what's your best option? You tap to play on your phone or smartwatch instead of swiping your card. Tap to play uses tokenization. That means when you make a payment, the merchant never sees your real card number. They simply get a randomized one-time token. If that token is stolen or intercepted, it's useless. Now, tap to play is built into Apple Pay, Google Pay, and Samsung Pay. And as long as you've locked your device, it's actually safer than using the physical card itself. Also, for online purchases and transactions, never use your real credit card number. Instead, employ a service like privacy.com or a bank that offers virtual cards. These are boner cards that you can lock to one specific merchant, spending limit, or even make single use only. If you do this and the site gets hacked or tries to overcharge you, you're covered. You simply cancel the virtual card and your real bank information stays completely hidden. If you make this simple change, it shuts down a massive leak vector most people never think about. Tip number five. Randomize your MAC address to avoid being tracked across Wi-Fi networks. Every time you connect to a Wi-Fi network, your device broadcasts something called a MAC address. It's a unique hardware identifier that never really changes. Of course, unless you intentionally change it. Most people do not recognize this, but your MAC address can be used to track you across locations. You might be in a coffee shop at the airport tomorrow, you still use the same address and then the same digital fingerprint. The good news is you fix this with MAC address randomization. Regardless of the device you use, you want to go to your settings and look for the Wi-Fi option and then you might find an option to randomize the MAC address. It differs from device, but then I've made a video on this where I show you how to do it on Android, iOS, Windows and Linux, so you might check that out. Tip number six, disable cloud clipboard and keyboard syncing. If you have ever copied a password or credit card number on your device, that clipboard data might be silently syncing to the cloud and you wouldn't even know. Windows Cloud Clipboard, for example, lets you copy something to your PC and paste it on another device. But this convenience means that the content is uploaded to Microsoft Cloud servers where it's out of your control. To disable this on Windows, go to Settings, Systems, then Clipboard. Then turn off both Clipboard History and Share Across Devices. This will keep your copied content local where it belongs. Also, many popular keyboards like Google's Gboard offer keyboard sync feature. This quietly will be syncing your typing history, predictive text, and more to your Google account. My recommendation is switching to open source alternatives like OpenBoard or Flores Board. These keep everything local with no cloud sync and no phone in home. 
Your clipboard and your keyboard are two of the most sensitive points of entry into your device. Disabling cloud syncing closes a leak that's invisible until it costs you. Tip number seven, strip metadata from your files before sharing. Every time you share a photo or a document, you might be giving away your GPS location, the camera or phone you used, your username, even the entire editing history. These are all embedded in the file as metadata. Never upload or share files straight from your device without cleaning them first. On Linux, you could use a tool called Mat2. It strips metadata from images, PDFs, office files, and more with a simple command. On Windows or Mac, you should use the EXIF tool for deep metadata scrubbing. Or you could also use Image Optim if you prefer a visual drag and drop method on Mac. For mobile devices, I recommend you snap a screenshot of the image. That usually will remove the metadata, but this is not 100% reliable, so keep that in mind. What's worth noting is that you must always clean your files before uploading to cloud storage or sharing them on platforms like Discord, Reddit, or even by email. Tip number eight, create a honeypot folder to catch intruders. If malware ever sneaks into your system, it won't go straight to your wallpaper. It hunts for the most juicy data. And here is where the honeypot file structure comes in. It's a fake but believable folder filled with decoy files designed to beat attackers and act as a tripwire. So you might create an Excel folder called financial slash tax returns slash passwords, or maybe another folder called crypto wallet slash seed phrase. Inside these files, you should drop harmless but convincing documents. Even password-protected Excel files filled with gibberish. These are not real, but they look real enough to attract spyware or a remote intruder. Now, here is the important bit. Use file access monitoring tools like File Audit or Folder Changer View or a simple PowerShell script to alert you if any of these decoys get opened or modified. You might even embed honey tokens fake credentials or tracking links that alert you when accessed externally. Some tools like canarytokens.org make this dead simple. If you ever get a ping from one of these decoys, that's your early warning. Someone is poking around where they shouldn't be. Tip number nine, freeze your credit card reports. Most people stop at 2FA and assume they are secure. But an attacker doesn't always need your password to ruin your life. They just need your name, birth date, your social security number to open accounts in your name. And you will not even know it until collection comes calling. So here's what I recommend. First, monitor your credit. If you're in the US, you might use annualcreditreport.com, but you may use the official credit agencies in your country. You're entitled to free checks from all three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. But more importantly, freeze your credit with all three bureaus. This will block anyone, even a hacker with your full identity from opening new accounts, credit cards, or loans in your name. And it's 100% free and fully reversible. It's not a flashy daily habit, which is why you probably have not heard about it. But it's one of the strongest shields against financial identity theft that you can enable in under 15 minutes. With an active freeze, you are in control, and banks would not even see your name on a credit check. Tip number 10, isolate your smart devices on a guest network. Your smart bulbs, thermostats, and security cameras are often the dumbest part of your home network. IoT devices are notorious for having outdated firmware, weak security, and hard-coded passwords. And once one of them gets breached, attackers can pivot to more valuable targets like your laptop, phone, or network-attached storage. So you must observe proper network segmentation. First, set up a dedicated guest Wi-Fi network, or even better, a VLAN if your router supports it, and connect only IoT devices to that network. Next, turn on MAC address filtering, so that only known addresses can join, keeping freeloaders and rogue gadgets locked out. And lastly, this is the most crucial bit. Disable UPnP on your router. 
That's your universal plug and play. UPnP makes life easier for your devices, but also opens risky ports without your approval. Now your smart home stays smart, but your sensitive devices are completely cut off from those insecure gadgets. This is what professionals do when securing high-risk networks, but you can do it right in your home. Tip number 11, shut down AI on your devices. This is the last tip I'll be discussing, but it may also be the hardest. Not technically, but psychologically. Artificial intelligence today is seductive. It auto-writes your text, predicts your next move, summarizes your notes, and much more. But that convenience comes at a cost. Access. Now, when I talk about AI, I'm not simply referring to voice assistants or cute chatbot apps. I'm talking about deep system level artificial intelligence. So things like Microsoft Copilot, Google's Gemini um, integration, or a fully running Apple intelligence. These tools don't just run on your devices, they run through them. They see everything, messages before you send them, clipboard contents, your screen context, your location, and even how you type. It's next level surveillance. And most of this data can be piped back to big tech servers which means you'll be trusting billion dollar ad companies to do nothing with juicy data. So really, what can you do? If you're on Windows, disable Copilot, or at least never use um, Copilot 365. Avoid Apple intelligence as much as you can. Many times there wouldn't be a straightforward way of disabling any of these. Stay away from cloud-based AI keyboards or messaging assistants. And finally, choose local or open source tools instead. I think I've pretty much covered most unconventional or less talked about privacy tips. But my question is, do you think any of these could be an overkill? Plus, I'm curious to know which of these you have or will be implementing. That is as much as I cover. Remember to like this video, share it, and of course, if this is your first time on the channel, subscribe please and i'll see you guys in the next one